A car is traveling down the highway, and the driver is trying to maintain a constant speed. When the car encounters a hill, it starts to slow down, so the driver pushes down the accelerator pedal to demand more power from the engine and restore the speed. Going down the back of the hill, the car speeds up, and the driver releases the accelerator pedal to demand less power from the engine, again restoring the speed. This is an example of a manual control system, allowing the driver of the car to regulate the car's speed. Since this task is tedious on a long trip, engineer Ralph Teeter invented the cruise control system, which first appeared on the 1958 Imperial, at that time a division of the Chrysler Corporation, under the name Autopilot. The cruise control system is an example of an automatic control system because it acts without human intervention. The idea of regulating the speed of a machine goes all the way back to the 1600s, when Christian Huygens described the use of a conical pendulum as a means of regulating the speed of mechanical clocks. Although it did not become widely used in clocks, he did apply it to regulate the distance between milestones in windmills, the constant adjustment of which was a frustration to windmillers who needed to produce high-quality flour. The conical pendulum idea was adapted by James Watt in the 18th century to regulate the speed of steam engines. In the centrifugal or flyboard regulator, a mechanism permits two weighted pendulum to swing out from a vertical shaft. As they do this, a linkage converts the motion to a linear displacement of a collar on the shaft. The shaft is driven by a pulley, chain or gears so that the angular speed is proportional to the engine speed. If the engine speed is low, the regulator spins slowly and the weights remain close to the shaft. As the engine speeds up, the regulator speeds up and the weights fly out. Finally, the collar is connected to a valve that restricts the flow of steam to the engine. If the engine turns too fast, the regulator closes the valve, which causes the engine speed to reduce. If the engine speed becomes too low, the regulator opens the valve, causing the engine to speed up. This corrective action, when properly designed, can keep the engine speed near a desired value. The float valve found in the modern flush toilet is used to control the level of water in a tank so that a large volume of water is available quickly when it's needed. Water flows into the empty tank through the open fill valve. As the water fills the tank, a float rises with the water level. As the water reaches the desired level, the float closes the fill valve. If the water level in the tank is lowered, for example, by flushing the toilet, the float falls and the fill valve opens again, causing the tank to refill. According to the classical scholar Herman Diels, the concept of the float valve dates to approximately 250 BC when the Greek inventor and mathematician Tisibis used it to regulate the level of water in a water clock in the Ptolemaic kingdom. We see again that timekeeping was a major influence in the development of control systems. Thermostatic heating systems keep us warm in the winter, and they use control systems to regulate the temperature of rooms. When a room is too cold, the heater turns on automatically to transfer heat to the air in the room. If the room is too hot, the heater turns off, and the room cools as it transfers excess heat to the outside. The critical component of an automatic heating system is the thermostat, which measures the temperature and compares it against a reference value set by the user. What do these examples have in common? In each one, some component or components of the system have a directing influence that tends to drive a physical quantity, for example, speed, water level, or temperature, to a prescribed value. The engineering definition of control is essentially the same as the dictionary definition, which states that to control is to exercise a restraining or directing influence over, or also to regulate, which is to govern or direct according to rule.
A control system is an interconnection of parts, components, or systems for the purpose of obtaining a desired response or behavior from a specified input. Control theory is the set of ideas used to explain the behavior of control systems. Most control systems act based on feedback from one or more measurements. In many control systems, there are some parts which are included in the system only for the purpose of controlling it. Referring to our previous examples, the cruise control system measures vehicle speed to decide the position of the, of the engine throttle. The float valve is open or closed based on the current water level. And the thermostat uses the current room temperature to determine whether to turn on or turn off the heater. Most of the time, the feedback is negative. Using the thermostatically controlled heater as an example, we can identify the controller, the system being controlled, also referred to as the plant, the specified input, the system output, which is also the measured feedback, and the control signal. Let's think about how the thermostat should act to make the actual temperature close to the desired temperature. If the desired temperature is above the actual temperature, then the heat output should be increased. On the other hand, if the desired temperature is less than the actual temperature, the heat output should be decreased. The controller uses the measurement of the actual temperature in a very particular way, which is a common property in control systems. This property is that increases in the feedback variable tend to decrease the control output. In other words, the feedback affects the system negatively. Negative feedback tends to have a stabilizing effect on systems. Positive feedback, in contrast, tends to have a destabilizing effect on systems. One example of this is found in population dynamics. Consider rabbits with an unlimited food supply and no predators. The more rabbits there are, the faster the population grows. This is an example of positive feedback because the rate at which bunnies are produced depends proportionally on the current number of rabbits and the system output, which is the new bunnies born, increases the current population. In this very simplified model of rabbit colony population dynamics, the number of rabbits will blow up to infinity. In other words, this is an unstable system. In summary, positive feedback tends to cause instability, while negative feedback tends to promote stability. There are also control systems that do not use feedback, which are called open-loop control systems. A simple example of this is a toaster. The inputs on the front of the toaster determine how long the toaster heats and maybe also how hot it gets, which will in turn determine the color of the toast that is produced. Whether the toast pops out with the color you desired depends on many factors, including whether the bread was frozen going into the toaster, how thick the slice of bread is, and the setting you selected. The toaster doesn't measure the color of the bread, which is the output, so there is no feedback that can be used to compensate for these other disturbances to the toasting process. When designing a control system, the designer typically has three objectives in mind. The system should have a desired transient performance, such as heating the room to the desired temperature within a certain amount of time. It may be required to exhibit a desired steady state output, such as maintaining the water level in the toilet at the correct level. And most importantly, the system must be stable. This video was made possible by funding from the IEEE Control Systems Society.